I'm doing it again. <laughs> Hello, nerds. Food here and here, and tonight we're talking about how we turn food into poop. <laughs> My name is Ricky. I'm a registered and licensed dietitian, and we'll be talking about. Oh, I got another one here. Maybe there's someone who appreciates. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, today we'll be talking about digestion. So, how does uh, a sandwich work its way down and come out as species? So we're gonna start in the mouth and work ourselves all the way down um, and out through the anus. All right. <laughs> Hope you guys uh, have finished eating, or you guys had the title before you came here. You knew what this was. <laughs> all right, so digestion starts in the mouth. Um, and there's mechanical and chemical digestion. So let's get started. So the first thing that digests in your mouth is your teeth. And they're kind of like the vegetable chopper, the, the slap chop of your body. Um, not just up and down, but side your jaw, your lower jaw moves side to side as well. And digestion means breaking the food into smaller pieces, right? And that's pretty obvious. That's what your teeth are doing there. Um, your saliva, your salivary glands are like little squirt guns, and they shoot the water at it. They shoot the saliva at it. That way, most of that is so that the food gets like mushy, so that if you're eating, you know, a cracker, uh, something really hard and dry, it's not then going to scratch down your throat, and it can form a solid ball called a bolus. Um, but also in your saliva is an enzyme called amylase. And amylase actually starts the chemical digestion of starches. Uh, so rumor has it that if you chew a raw tomato, you're welcome to use it anytime. Raw tomatoes, you know, we don't serve them. They're kind of gross, but they're not dangerous. If you chew a raw to potato for two minutes, I might've said tomato a few times. <laughs> I have a garden this year, I'm very excited. If you chew a raw potato for two minutes, it'll actually start to taste sweet. And that's because starches are long chains of glucose, a type of sugar. And the amylase actually will start to break down that starch into individual glucose molecules. In contrast, if you chew on a piece of paper for two minutes, um, it, the taste will never change because that's just made out of like plant fibers, right? Tree pulp. Uh, and we don't actually digest that. All right, the next part, this is all still just in our mouth, all the digestion. The next part is your, your tongue, your taste buds. Some of your taste buds don't actually taste the food. They're like little suction cups and they help carry the food to the back of your throat or as you're moving around to your teeth. So that's what your tongue does for digestion. And the last one uh, is your lips. They form a tight seal so the food doesn't fall out. So it has the chance to go on this excellent journey to dung. Um, so at this point, so my sister is a speech language pathologist and so she really specializes in all the involuntary and voluntary muscles to about here, right? She could go in deeper, but she's in Virginia and I'm a dietitian, so we're going to move on. So after your mouth, it goes down to your stomach, but between your mouth and your stomach, there's about this much space and that's your esophagus. All right, this is what's in your throat. Um, and your esophagus is just the Fort Pitt tunnel. It gets things from here to there, but nothing happens for digestion. So the only neat thing that happens in your esophagus is, have you ever noticed you can still swallow things even if you're not just upright, right? Gravity should take it down. What if you're lying in bed or you're doing a handstand and you wanna see if you can drink water, right? Some will go up your nose, but some of it will still go to your stomach. And the reason is uh, peristalsis. So peristalsis is a series of muscle contractions that move things in a particular direction. So my visual here is toothpaste. You can squeeze the tube and the toothpaste will come out just one end. Um, and unless you're doing something weird like vomiting, it's always gonna go down to your stomach. And peristalsis runs our whole digestive tract. This is just where it starts. Oh. So, <laughs> so before we get to our stomach, so the way it gets from the end of your esophagus into your stomach is by something called your lower esophageal sphincter. What is the most popular video game right now? Desert Storm Commando Warriors. 
<laughs> that would have to do with that limited skirmish in the Middle East. Yes. What the hell is he doing? What the hell is he doing? <laughs> well, hang on, I got one more. So here's what we know about sphincters so far, right? You can make fun of someone by calling somebody a sphincter. But right, we're just talking about stomachs and esophagus right now. Hang on. We've also got... I don't know if you've seen this one. <laughs> so, in this one, um, this is the digestion episode, and Keisha, re voice replaced by Tiffany Haddish for this meme, um, says, girl, that's a booty hole, right? Because even though... A hey, a sphincter is just a circular muscle that opens and closes to let things in or out or keep them where they are in a controlled way. That's not what Wayne is talking about. He's calling that guy an asshole, right? <laughs> so we've also got several sphincters around our body, but the most well-known one is certainly not the lower esophageal. All right, so now things are finally in our stomach. And our stomach does a lot more digestion. So first of all, this is a cross section. So the top part of it, you see there's like muscle layers cut away. And you've got three directions of, it has three muscle layers in your stomach. And it's kind of like if the food was inside the rubber band ball, it's really chopping up the food all the rest of the way, right? Maybe you didn't completely chew up those Cheetos. Well, your stomach will take care of it. It's, it's not maybe as lazy as you might have been in the voluntary portion of this. <laughs> all right, so in that way, it's mechanically digesting it. It is just chomping it up. Next up, we've got chemical digestion. If your salivary glands or score guns, uh, the ones in your stomach shooting out stomach acid, those are like your mega super soakers, okay? They are just liquefying it. And this is chemical digestion. So this is doing in a big way what amylase did in a little way to all those starch molecules. So everything, fat, carbs, protein, everything is just getting liquefied mechanically and chemically. It's done. It is soup at this point. And the bottom part of this cutaway, uh, those are like folds and they're called rugae. And they kind of work like an accordion. So you may have heard that your stomach expands when you're eating and then it shrinks when it's empty. That's absolutely true. And this is just the part of the body that lets it do that. It's, it's rugae. And, and so if you're full, you feel it. All right, so then we've got, of course, another sphincter at the bottom of our stomach, but those were the only videos I had. So next up, we're in our small intestine. And it looks like it's separated here because in your abdomen, everything's, you know, just kind of superimposed on each other, but it's all connected. And your small intestine is actually quite large. So I've pre-selected a helper. <laughs> so your small intestine, you can think of like a straw or a piece of string. And it is 20 feet long. And pro so here we go. Here's a small intestine all stretched out. And of course it fits in our body because it's like, you know, it's all mushed together how it was when I had it on the floor there. Thank you. Um, so how come it is so long? We need a lot of surface area. So our digestion part, the breaking down of food, is done. Now we're going to switch to absorption, which is actually bringing all the little microscopic um, vitamins, minerals, fats, carbs, protein, all that stuff into your bloodstream. You're actually accepting it into your body now. And it needs surface area because the only way it can absorb is if it touches the organ wall. That's where the, you know, that's where it all happens. So in addition to having a lot of surface area by being a narrow hallway, it also has these finger-like projections, my jazz hands, um, that are called villi. And so now we also have all the surface area between the fingers. Can we do more? Yes. Microvilli. <laughs> so on each, each one of the, villi is plural, on each one of the villa, now you have this much surface area, okay? 
Now it'd be really cool if then I had like more and more pictures, but that's what you've got. You've got your long hallway, your straw of your small intestine, and then you've also got your villi and then your microvilli. And that, you have now absorbed all your nutrients. At this point, well, except one, which we'll get to. At this point, everything left is waste. Everything else is basically beginning, is becoming poop at this point. Now, before I move on, probably through another sphincter, I'm wondering, has anybody read the Amazon reviews for sugar-free gummy bears? I think we have. Has anybody ever accidentally eaten the whole bag of sugar-free gummy bears? I, um, so we all, we all learned our lesson from reading it. We got to learn our lesson the easy way. So this is, I don't know if the reviews are true, but this is a true thing that happens. If you haven't heard of it, if you eat a lot of sugar-free gummy bears or a lot of sugar-free chocolate, a lot of sugar-free anything, you will get really bad diarrhea. And, um, and oh, as I was mentioning, in your stomach, things are basically vomit at that point. Once it's in your small intestine, we can basically call it diarrhea. So here's what happens, nothing's wrong the manufacturer did nothing wrong here. The problem was they ate so much. So um, sugar substitutes, the way the molecule is, is they grab onto water. So you eat a bunch of them, you keep eating more. And then of course we have a lot of water in our body. We're probably you know drinking fluids while we're eating. And so these sugars, they're digested and they're just, they just keep pulling in water. And what that does is it makes the volume larger in your small intestine than it would have otherwise been. Um, now remember a few slides back, we had those rugae, that accordion uh, aspect of your stomach that let it stretch. Well, your stomach will, your intestines don't want to. So it's kind of this like, come on, I'm gonna put more water in there. No, I don't want you to. And so they kind of just, no, right? And that is what causes, it's called osmotic diarrhea. It has to do with um, the, the water has caused too much volume in your intestines. Uh, the good news is osmotic diarrhea is, it's the symptom and the whole problem. Once you go to the bathroom um, and the offending volume is removed from your body, you feel a lot better. So it's, it's not dangerous, um, except for maybe the dehydration that can accompany diarrhea and the danger of like shitting your pants. <laughs> Other than that though, you're good. <laughs> All right, so we're towards, we're towards, uh, we're towards the bottom now, we're towards our bottom now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> We're in our large intestine, which is also called your colon. And you see there's a lot of different parts on here, and it kind of ends and then um, just really finishes up in your, in your rectum, in your anus. But all the different parts of your colon basically do the same thing, which is they suck out the water. So if it was diarrhea when it was in your small intestine, it's now really poop now that it's in your, big, your large intestine, okay? Otherwise, we would become dehydrated. So as it sucks out the water, right? It gets thicker and thicker. And just like these are our sewage pipes, what a nice example of life, uh, or art imitating life. Okay, sewage pipes, they're large, you gotta get like all the waste out of there. Um, and we can think of the different intestines like this. So we have the small intestine, which is like a regular straw, right? Maybe this is how we're drinking our milk. And your large intestine is maybe about like five feet long, more or less, and it's much thicker. So you can think of these like a milkshake straw, right? If you're drinking regular milk, regular straw is fine. If you're drinking something thick like a milkshake, you'll need a milkshake straw. All right, so that's, that's a way to kind of remember the small intestine is much bigger, but, the, but its inside is smaller, and the large intestine is larger. So now we have gone from our mouth, through our esophagus, through the stomach, you see some of our accessory organs. I can answer that during questions if you want. Our liver, our pancreas, our gallbladder, our stomach, our small intestine, our large intestine. I love this cartoon by the Awkward Yeti that shows it off as well. And out our anus, the most famous sphincter, until we are finally, I got one more pun, relieved of our journey. Thank you.